Howdy there folks. So today is public land mule deer rifle here in Wyoming. Um, Venful start to the season. I uh, saw some little bucks yesterday, nothing, you know, worth shooting or going after very small, little forkies, little three by threes. Um, saw a guy shoot, I think six times last night and miss, I think all six times, but not too, too great a start uh, opening day. And then last night, the heater went out in the camper and I had my wife and kid with me. So I was trying to take care of them and, and get that working. And so we didn't uh, end up hunting in the morning. And then uh, my wife went to leave shortly thereafter and punched a hole in her oil pan in her vehicle. So I ended up driving about four or five hours around in circles and trying to patch that up to get through the next week and whatnot. So I did get out for this evening. And so here we are ready to go hunting for evening number two. All right, folks, so I've hiked in probably about a mile is all, and uh, there's different old timber cut tiers or logging roads, and the upper logging road has a lot of footprints on it. it. has a lot of deer tracks, but a lot of footprints. So I went down to the lower logging road, and there's tons of these timber cuts. They're old and uh, excellent feed area and you can glass pretty well. So I'm set up on the edge of the timber. I'm gonna glass these timber cuts. And then when the thermal switch, I'll be able to hunt my way out. So right now, thermals are going up. I can hunt below me, thermal switch. When I'm hiking out, I can hunt what's coming from above me. Um, and I can also hunt like the side hills here. So we work in these areas. Um, Fingers crossed, hopefully I get into some. I probably will run into some hunters. There's a lot of them out here, but uh, hopefully I run into a deer first. So you can kind of see what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Normally I would cross valley glass, but I don't want to do that because if I do that, I won't be able to have a shot tonight. It's too big of a valley to shoot across. And I know there's deer moving in here. So I'm in a position, timber to my back. I can glass these open areas here. There's tons of open area. And then I can also hunt these like old timber roads, old logging roads as I'm walking in and out. All right, so, so far I've been out about maybe two hours, nothing. Saw some deer, saw some spikes on the way in, driving, but nothing. It's gorgeous and even though, and uh, hopefully something pops out. I got about an hour and a half left. I'm quite certain there's some elk within a couple hundred yards. I smelled them, heard them a little bit, but uh, that's not what I'm after tonight. All right, folks, so I'm out here. It's a beautiful, gorgeous October evening, a light five mile an hour breeze, maybe. Bright, sunny blue skies and uh, probably about 60 degrees. So just waiting for these deer to pop up. When I hiked in, I hiked in within about 100 yards to 150 yards over top of two bedded does and they're just knocked out sleeping so I decided to stop where they're at and uh, let them rest and then when they get up that'll probably signify it's time for me to start looking for a buck. We're gonna go over the top three tips I have to improve your in the field accuracy while hunting and hopefully help you make less misses. So these are real world um, practical tips that I have um, used myself. And tip number one is don't rush your shot. Um, shooting at a range, you're generally in a relaxed environment. You have all the time in the world. The target's generally not moving and there's no real repercussion or negative consequence of missing. So you're very relaxed. And therefore, usually you do a better job taking your time on your trigger squeeze and acquiring your sight picture. However, when you're out hunting in the field, even for an experienced hunter, it's easy to get buck fever, adrenaline, fatigue, and these things set in and you slap the trigger or you make a rash, quick decision or shot. I do it, I'm guilty of it. So a good thing to do is to develop a uh, kind of mental checklist. And one of those things being every time you take a shot while hunting, remember to take a couple breaths, 
relax, get a good rest, and slowly squeeze the trigger and let it surprise you while maintaining your sight picture correctly. All right, so that's tip number one. Tip number two, don't um, have the magnification on your scope all the way cranked up. A lot of times now it's very popular to use high powered scopes or high power variable optics, maybe uh, 3 to 12, 4 to 12, 3 to 18, um, or 6 to 24 even while hunting, especially out west. I'm guilty of this. You get that adrenaline going and let's say you're making a 300 yard shot. You've practiced endless amounts at the range. You feel confident. And so you just crank that magnification up without thinking to full power or nearly full power. Well, not only does this tend to make acquiring your sight picture staying on target much more difficult with fatigue and adrenaline coursing through your veins, but also if you do miss, you can't see if you missed generally and you can't make another follow-up shot. And so that's a very bad thing, especially if the first one is a hit and then you wanna make sure and ethically put a second shot into it it's very difficult to do. Also, if you're going through the woods and you're going through the brush, an animal presents what would have been a good shot and you leave your magnification up or you've already cranked it up, it's gonna be difficult for you to pull that shot off quickly on say 12 power. All right, so that's tip number one, tip number two. And tip number three, tip number three is practice practice, practice using real life scenarios during the year. Practice shooting off of your backpack, practice shooting off of your shooting sticks if that's what you're gonna use, practice shooting off your bipod if that's what you're gonna use, practice shooting in different positions and in different weather. So one of the biggest mistakes people make is they sight in their rifle at a bench, they do all their practicing at a bench, and then when they go out and they have an opportunity on a mule deer and elk, they don't have a bench there and so they spend a really long time trying to get comfortable get a steady rest and that either costs them a shot opportunity or create a poor foundation for them to take the shot and therefore they miss because they're unsteady because they're trying to shoot off hand or they're they don't have a proper rear rest or they've never shot laying off of a backpack or with a backpack upright to get above the weed line and so they're very unsteady and they miss what otherwise would be an either easy shot excuse me so those are my three uh, tips to make you more accurate in the field and hopefully prevent you from missing uh, shots on game or making poor shots now there's other good ones out there those are just the three that i chose for this video and uh, hopefully it helps you during this hunting season All right, folks, well, just like that, my mule deer season's over. Um, 10 minutes before I got in here, two other hunters dropped in, took off somewhere out on this big piece of state. And, uh, you know, I debated going in at all, but uh, they passed up a group, a couple does, a forky, moved them out at like 200 yards, probably 300 yards. And then they, they moved on. So I went to just double check that herd and I'd seen the forky and passed on them already. And uh, those moved off and there was actually a very small buck, but a bigger buck than those tucked into the weeds just bedded. And he was watching everything go down. So I don't, I think they probably saw him and were just like, ah, he's too small. And normally that's what I would say too. But I've hunted mule deer probably 15 to 20 days, thousands of dollars in diesel and tons of blood, sweat and tears. It's getting, we only got a couple days. This was the, my last day or second last day for mule deer hunting and he's only about a half mile if that from the truck, probably about a half mile. And so it was like early in the day, half mile from the truck. And I think he's just a little basket three by three. Um, probably could have got a bigger one earlier in the year, but uh, I think he's even smaller than my buddy who I helped get one. And I don't know what's going on with this gun. I'm not sure, I'm not sure. It's probably me, but I'm not sure what's going on with this thing. Tacticam is running, doing a great job this time. But I don't know if I got a gun issue or what's going on. A scope issue honestly it could be a me issue i really think it's because i threw this suppressor on like a week before deer hunting and i just don't think i've had enough time with it so i think throwing that suppressor on was risky and i think that my dope's just off and uh either that or i bumped the zero on my scope 
I've been beating this thing up hard all year. So, but uh, first two shots, clean misses. First one, he didn't even get out of his bed. Second one was close. He got out of his bed. And then I adjusted my dope, held lower. Well, actually I adjusted to 350 yards and I thought he was at 375. And I, I, it looks like I dropped him. So not sure if I spined him. Sounded like a lung hit to be honest, but uh, shouldn't take three shots to get a mule deer that's bedded and relaxed broadside at 375 yards. But uh, not sure what happened there. I'm ready to go in here in a few minutes. It's been about, I don't know, 10 minutes. So just gorgeous day. Uh, deer were just moving, man, driving in. I saw four times the amount of mule deer moving today. I think that the guys that went deep where I was originally gonna go are probably gonna have success on a monster because there's some good ones back there. But uh, he's just right in this brush patch right there. And uh, hopefully he's done for. I'll be walking up there in just a second. All right, folks, here's my 2022 mule deer. Uh, I would say major ground shrinkage, potentially not even the first deer I saw that I thought I was shooting at. A little bit embarrassed. I thought it was an actual like three by three. Turns out it was really a, a forky and uh, way smaller than I thought. He'll be really good eating though and good packing out. And it's early in the day. I'm solo hunting. Uh, so hey, at least I broke the two year mule deer curse and finally got one down. I cannot believe I missed him somehow in the first two shots. I'm gonna have to check this rifle. This is the Pure CT Rival in 300 PRC using Vortex LHT scope. I do not think it was the rifle itself, but what I mean is the system, the rings, the scope. Uh, and I put the suppressor on and really haven't spent a lot of time with it, so it could be that. I'm happy nonetheless. I'm only like a half mile from the road and it's early in the day, so. It's not the trophy I was hoping for. It's been a tough, tough mule deer season for me. Had some misses and stuff, and just really only had one opportunity on a mule deer bigger than, well, I helped a buddy get a, a pretty solid three by three by two compared to this, a lot bigger than this. Um, and that was great helping him get his first mule deer buck, so I still don't regret that. But I did have one miss on a, a pretty decent solid four by four with eye guards, and that was a little hard to swallow, but, uh, Anyways, got it done, and uh, let's get them cut up and packed out. Good thing, you know what? Half mile from the road, still daylight, skinned and quartered, ready to go. It's like the perfect deer, man. Like super tender, gonna taste great. And on top of it, one load, not too bad. And I should be out in time for dinner. Let's go. Thanks for watching Bullets for Bucks. Check out this next video and subscribe.